So to finish up this little video series, uh, we're going to talk about how to export this prop, export the textures, pull them into Unreal Engine 4, and just set up a little scene to show it off correctly. So the first thing we have to do is get these textures that we've carefully created, or you will eventually, one day, um, export it in, in an efficient manner. And efficiently means that since channels like, like the metal and the ambient occlusion and the roughness are grayscale channels, uh, you might as well pack them into a single texture. So that's typically what I end up doing. So uh, I have a number of standard configs here. Uh, this is one that I've used for a lot of things. So we're going to repurpose this one by, by changing the name to gas cooker. And we don't have an emissive or a custom channel, so I'm going to ignore these bottom two. But if you just breeze over these real quick, th there's my base color. There's my direct X normal, like we talked about before. And this ID texture is a channel pack texture where I have the, the roughness, the metal, and the ambient occlusion packed into the RGB channels. This allows me to have one texture to serve three purposes, which saves memory. So good. We'll use, you, you probably noticed that's my old We Happy Few configuration. We'll export to Targa because that's what makes things happy most of the time. And we'll pick a spot on the hard drive and uh, export it. 2048 seems fine for our purposes. Let it go and it's done. Okay, with that done, now we need to export the mesh. So we're back in Modo and we're getting ready to export the mesh to that same folder. However, the mesh is not finished yet because the mesh needs, well, depending on what you're doing with it, it may need a couple of things. Uh, we're not gonna make a light map uh, because I don't care about that right now. But it does need collision because you know I do plan to have some fun with physics. So we're going to duplicate this paint mesh and we'll call it, I don't know, mesh gas cooker. So now what I want to do is select everything, but I want to deselect, actually, hold on, if I just select these and select the opposite, okay. Wrap a bounding box around that, cut it out, make a new mesh item, paste it in. Now I have a, uh, a transparent material that's part of my standard scene setup. So I, I call it my pie menu and I make that mesh transparent. Now I can work with it much easier. So we're going to give the edges a bevel like this, select the top and bottom, use the Seneca Menard script to turn those into a perfect circle select everything and scale it in so it just touches that that fat ridge down here okay now this guy this gas cooker has a couple of advantages because this does allow me to use one collision hull which is nice because uh, we'll stay convex you'll see that here in a second so i'm going to throw an edge loop in here because i'm going to want to change direction there and I'm going to throw one in here because there's a change there. All right. Having done that, let me turn the grid off. That means I can scale or grab, turn the grid off, grab this polygon, scale this in until it just kind of skirts in there and matches the shape. Grabbing this top one, excuse me, I can scale in here until that touches that ridge. Pull that in until that touches that top area. If I isolate that mesh now, you can see we have a pretty simple collision shape. And that's going to work well enough for our purposes. For completeness sake, I'll just hit that with a quad, quad cap, and we're good to go. Uh, the only thing left to do is to name this collision mesh correctly. And if you've been using you know, the Unreal Engine for any amount of time, you know it's UCX with an underscore and the name of the mesh. Perfect. So I'm going to export those to that same folder and I'll meet you over in Unreal Engine 4. Okay. And here we are in Unreal Engine 4. Now I've gone ahead and I've imported the exported <laughs> textures that we spit out of Substance Painter 
and I also brought the mesh in. So I'll just drag the mesh out to this little scene so we can get a look at it. Yeah, obviously we have to set up the material, but it's here. If I turn on collision, we can see that my collision hull is on it. So we're all happy. So we're all happy here. Now the scene itself is, is really nothing to write home about. It's just a basic scene with a, uh, I have some HDRI images that I use uh, for different purposes. You, you, you attach those to your skylight and then the skylight will use that to, uh, to light the scene. Uh, I also have a point light uh, that I stick above the props and you can see these rings that are appearing on the, on the ground below there. That's because the light has an IES profile attached to it. Now, if you search for IES profile uh, in Google, I think the first hit you get is the Unreal 4 documentation. And it'll explain what all these are and how to download them. But basically, it takes your, uh, your point light and gives it a realistic lighting profile. So for different kinds of light bulbs, but it can really make it, you know, a nice effect if used, you know, correctly, you know, and in the right context. So yeah, I like using them because they can, you know, make some cool looking uh, reflections and things. Anyway, this has been imported. And if you go, if, if you go to my texture folder, we can see we have, you know, there's our diffuse, there's our normal map. And this is the channel pack texture that I exported. Now, something to keep in mind here is that you want to change the compression settings on your, on your, your ID texture to masks. Uh, it just, you know, actually, I'm not sure of the, of the technical reason. I just know that you need to do it for this texture to look its best. There's a bunch of math reasons, I think, but you know, we'll quick, we'll go through it again. There's our, our roughness, I believe there's our metalness. And there's our ambient occlusion. So yeah, it's all packed in one texture and very efficient. So next up, we're going to create a material to put on this gas cooker. Okay, the material is not going to be anything too fancy, just a quick gas cooker. I'm going to open the prop and drag it right into the slot. So it's automatically assigned at all times. And we're going to zoom up here. You know, it's funny, this, uh, this static mesh viewer typically is not the best place to evaluate your textures. So I wouldn't get into that habit, but it's fine for double, you know, uh, for sanity checking that you've done things correctly. So we'll just quickly do the base color and the normal. Uh, and then our channel pack texture, we just hook up the roughness, the metal and the ambient occlusion. And that should be that. Uh, we'll hit apply and let that shader compile close this out and there it is. Now, obviously that looks terrible, but once you get it you know, inside the game environment, then it's, you know, then it looks much, much better and much more like what you were anticipating. So as a final act of inspecting this prop, uh, one fun way to check it from all angles is to do what I've done here, make a whole bunch of copies of it and make sure that the simulate physics checkbox is turned on because we have collision. So that means that if I turn on the simulate physics in the engine, these will all fall down and collide with each other and roll around and settle. Now, while that's cool, it's also practical because these are all, it, these have all landed on different angles. I can fly around, I can check them out. I can look from all different angles and check out my reflections and my metals and make sure the bottom looks the way that I'm anticipating it to look and that the feet came out correctly and all that sort of jazz and make sure that they work as a collection of objects. So if you hit the F11 key, you can get the full screen view and this gets into, well, at this point you're starting to get into, you could get creative with the lighting. You could add a few more props and you know, start making some, uh, uh, some art station renders, right? And if you're not happy with the lighting in here, we can easily go and have a play with that. So let me find my point light. If I tell the point light to use temperature, and take it down to say 3,500. Now it's starting to get a warmer tint on the metal, something really hot, like a 2,200, something like that. You start to get those nice warm hits coming through. Yeah, there you go, see? 
That I like a lot. So with the warm and the cool hits, you could even have some sort of a at a blue background kind of fill light to fill in the darker shadows with a blue tinge and just really get a nice look going. So anyway, that's a quick little blurb about presentation and importing it into the Unreal Engine. And I think that wraps it up for this prop. So there we go. Uh, people have been asking me for a while now to do a, uh, a complete prop tutorial from start to finish. And here we are. I finally had a block of time where I could squeeze it in. So I was happy I could get to this. If you have any feedback on it, you know, leave it down in the comments and I will take it on board for next time. I, I'm going to put a link to the source files down in the description of the video. You know, if you want to download the Moto file, the FBX, the Substance Painter file, they'll all be in there and you can take them and play with them and, and do whatever. Thanks for watching. See you next time.